Morning, glory, America, Bonjour, High Canada. I'm Hugh Hewitt, live for the last week in Studio North. It's time to pack up and go to the Beltway, get ready for all the activity on November 5. Now I want to fill you in on the general election. Last night, we hosted some of our friends from our local gang up here, and that included, of course, Mark the Digger and Tony, Mr. CRE, and their wonderful spouses and my brother-in-law. We had, we had a great time, and as usually happens in this season, talk turned to politics, and I was asked, since it's what I do, what is going to happen, to which I replied honestly, I don't have any idea, and nobody has any idea, because nobody knows what the turnout model is, and I can tell you that today NBC shocked Team Harris by saying the race is tied, On Sunday, they released their polls, and they did a poll a month ago that had Harris up five, and their new poll shows that Harris is tied with Trump. And that, of course, sent off every alarm bell in the world. But if they hadn't heard that already, they haven't been listening because every indicator of the election ahead is positive for Trump, which, of course, ought to make Trump people very uneasy. They like to run from behind. I, I, I don't know how they even react to being ahead, and they are ahead. They, If we just go with the data, they are ahead because Trump under polls and Trump is tied everywhere, and in some crucial swing states like Pennsylvania, he is ahead. And I expect his turnout will be great. I do want to bring to your attention one New York Times story yesterday. Harris struggles to win over Latinos while Trump holds his grip, full show. Why... Why would we even care about the sub-tabs for a lead article? All right, why do we care about which way blacks are going, which way Latinos are going, except as an indication as to why Trump is winning? They are preparing a narrative for, they being legacy media, are preparing a narrative to explain why Donald Trump wins on election night if they uh, find themselves confronted with that, that eventuality. Now, they hate that prospect. The body language, the hostility, the the never-ending assault on Trump and Vance is part of legacy media's. They've, they're on tilt. If you come from the pinball area, you know when a machine tilts, is you've, you've hit it too hard, and it tilts, and you can't play anymore. Well, they can't play anymore because they've, they've tilted. They've tilted out. They absolutely have no ability to report anything remotely, fairly, or with the appropriate emphasis. Example, over the weekend, we had Netanyahu call Biden, or Biden call Netanyahu late last week. In that phone call, it's widely reported in the Israeli press, that Joe Biden asked, nudged, demanded, Netanyahu not hit Beirut anymore. Doesn't matter that Hezbollah's all over Beirut, and they have weapons all over Beirut. Doesn't matter. Biden hasn't, um, the headline in the Times of Israel, IDF, Israeli Defense Forces, hasn't hit Beirut in recent days following Biden request. Guess what happened over the weekend? Two Hezbollah drones hit one, hurt dozens and dozens of civilians. I believe the death toll there is four. A second one hit um, an Israeli air base and the Golani base. 41 soldiers wounded. So we have two major incidents over the weekend The U.S. is sending a THAAD system, uh, a high-altitude defense system. A hundred American soldiers are deploying so much for the combat zone, not having it. And all Joe Biden does is give bad advice. Netanyahu would be well-served by doing exactly the opposite of whatever Joe Biden asked him to do, because Joe Biden is being advised by people who do not care for Israel at all. It just is clear to me they just have allowed Netanyahu hatred to blind them. But he has incompetently performed, and Kamala Harris spent the weekend not talking about this. She went to a black church. She did uh, another one of her word salads. Joy comes in the morning. You've seen it on the Internet. I'm not going to play for you again. All I can say is America is collectively coming to the conclusion that Harris Walsh may be the worst uh, ticket they've ever seen. Most people don't remember 72. I don't remember 72 very well. But McGovern Eagleton didn't even make it to the end, right? Eagleton had to drop off. But but Harris Waltz, it's really bad. Why? They aren't coherent. They don't know how to make an argument. Do we do we have the video of Mike Waltz, uh, Tim Waltz hunting? 
But this was this was truly objectively terrible. Uh, cut number. Where, where is the yeah the yeah, B roll? Cut number eight. Just roll it in Minnesota. Tim Waltz wants to show that he knows what he's doing, and he takes out the longest gun I've ever seen. Kind of gun is it? It's, this is a it's a shotgun, I and it's a. It he doesn't know how to work it. He doesn't. Let it be like me with a shotgun. Here, Hugh, here's a shotgun. Go into a field with an orange vest. And I saw some comments online that the gun safety approach had the reporters and the handlers and the paparazzi in front of him. And he's wandering around with a gun he can't work. I, I really, everything they do, every single thing they do is bad. David Urban, one of the handful, Scott Jennings and David Urban make up all the conservatives at CNN. I don't know that there are any at NBC, ABC, CBS. Really, I don't. I don't know if there's any pro-Trump person on any of those stations. But Scott Jennings, McConnell guy, and very smart W guy. David Urban, Trump guy. Both of them were on a lot. They do their best. Here is David Urban on CNN's panel yesterday, cut number 17. She had a terrible week. It was a terrible week for the Harris this, this campaign. You had Gretchen Whitmer having to apologize to the Catholics across America for mocking them with some Dorito, bizarro Dorito thing on, on there. You had um, Governor Elmer Fudd out hunting and um, not knowing how to load his shotgun, using the wrong gun. At the same time... Who's Governor Elmer Fudd? G Governor Waltz was out oh. there. looked like Elmer <laughs> Fudd. You know, be very, very quiet while hunting for wabbits. Oh my God. Right? So, so he, he, does, he can't load his shotgun. He's trying to appeal to hunters. You can't load the gun. You're using the wrong gun. At the same time, you have Barack Obama in Pennsylvania deriding, who, where he derided people who own guns. Remember, cling, people in Pennsylvania were bitter, and they cling to guns and religion. Remember that in 2008? So they're trying to appeal to those folks at the same time while he alienates black male voters by chastising them. So they had a really tough week this week. Well, very tough week, and it showed up in the polls. President Obama yelling at black men. We've got to go find that clip, Generalissimo, during the break, because he did. He lectured black men that they're afraid of black women and they won't vote for her as a result. Maybe the biggest blowback I've seen, maybe the biggest misstep of his political career since his first debate with Mitt Romney. There are very, hard, very, very few times when Barack Obama steps in it, but he stepped in it this weekend yelling at black men. I, I don't know how many black men are out there who have not seen that clip or heard about that clip, but they will. Uh, being lectured by the multimillionaire Martha Vineyard Living jet set, Davos loving former Chicago state senator who lucked into the presidency telling them they have to vote for Kamala and they're just not sold on Kamala Harris and they won't be sold on Kamala Harris and Latinos aren't sold on Kamala Harris and blacks aren't sold on Kamala Harris and whites aren't sold on Kamala Harris. Americans aren't sold on Kamala Harris. I think this could break pretty dramatically. Now, October surprises are real. Last night at dinner, I said, the big October surprise could be all-out war between Israel and Iran. Because Netanyahu has had it with the gang running the Weakness R Us uh, franchise at 1600 Pennsylvania, R, uh, the, you know, the appeasement uh, club, which has gathered at Foggy Bottom, the National Security Council, the Department of Defense, and the White House. He's had it, and Israel lost a lot of people this weekend, injured a lot of people this weekend. They are going to take the gloves off. They've got four divisions in southern Lebanon, and the gloves are going to come off pretty soon with Iran. They're going to pick their own time in choosing, they've said, to respond. But they can't wait too long, right? They've got, they've got to do it while people have it fresh. And Netanyahu has probably come to the conclusion correctly, even though the risk is declining of a Kamala Harris presidency, it would be the worst president for Israel since 1948 and the state founding, because she doesn't really like the Israelis. And she's made that about as clear as anyone can make anything clear that she says. But that's the bottom line on the weekend. The bottom line on the weekend is it's the best of times, it's the worst of times. Best of times because the Guardians open up tonight at Yankee Stadium. Alex Cobb starting for the, the Guardians. I may, I may be a little incoherent this week because the American League Championship Series, the guards are in it. For, last time they were in it was in 2016 when they were still named the Indians. But they beat the Tigers uh, in Game 5 with a Grand Slam home run from Lane Thomas. So I had a good weekend there. The Browns apparently are not going to play football this season at all. So we might be 1-16, in 16, which is fine. We need a new quarterback. That's pretty obvious to everyone. 
So Deshaun will play out his ridiculous contract for two more years. We'll get a rookie for two years, and, and maybe Deshaun will be a decent backup. We'll see. But in the meantime, in the meantime, it's Guardians Week. I'll be up late every night this week. I'm, I'm just asking you in advance for a little bit of grace because I'm not going to be getting my seven hours of sleep uh, this week, not with uh, Guardians Yankees on tap. But generally, good news. Looks like Donald Trump is coming back, and we have a lot of ground to make up. For.